Let's turn our Bible on Jonah chapter 3. Jonah chapter 3. Tonight we will look at uh, three points from verse 1 till verse 4. We will look at God's love, verse 5 to verse 9, God's grace, and verse 10, God's mercy. So let's start with verse 1 to verse 4. And the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time, saying, Arise. Go unto Nineveh, that great city, and preach unto it the preaching that I did. So Jonah rose and went unto Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceeding great city of three days journey. And Jonah began to enter into the city a day's journey, and he cried and said, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overflow. On verse 1 and verse 2, we look here in first place is the word of the Lord came unto Jonah. The Lord made a first step. We look in the back like uh, chapter 1 and we see also that the Lord sent Jonah in first place to Nineveh. And this time we see there's a but and Jonah went to Tarshish. God sent him to Nineveh. He went to Tarshish. But on his road to Tarshish, God entered him. He sent storm. And then Jonah was thrown in the sea, according to the God's appointment. And then God provided fish as provision to protect Jonah, and he was in the fish three days and three nights. And after that, God commanded the fish, and the fish flew in on the dry land. Now we are in chapter three. First thing, the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time. This is uh, the mercy of God. He didn't deal to us according to our sin, but according to his mercy. God can, and he's right, if he just stop there with Jonah, saying, Jonah, you are not qualified. You are not worthy to bring my word. You disobey me, and you go in the opposite way. You follow what you think is best. But God worked in the life of Jonah. He free by his grace, by his mercy, storm in his life. God changed him. Changed the man. And now God rising. He says, verse 2, rise. It's a command of God. And go unto Nineveh, that great city, and preach unto it the preaching that I did. So when God sent someone, he prepared the word that we uh, share, and it's the word of God. It says here, the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, and preaching that I did. So the message that we, as a preacher, as a, someone who evangelized, someone who shared it, to the sinners, is the word of God that we bring. It's not our wisdom, it's the word of God. So our preaching has to be centered with the word of God. Christ lifted up the sacrifice of Christ for the sinner. So that's the only way that the sinner can be saved. There's no other way. That is our preaching, the center of our preaching. And there is no other wisdom that can change the sinner except by that. Because that is according to the wisdom of God. And he said, and he prepared also those that he sent. He prepared them in different way. 
maybe we think maybe just recently God prepared me, but when God sent someone, it can lifetime he prepared the person. Like it's not just a few, it's everything according to God's purpose. There is everything count, everything matter, and all of those bring to the fact that there is an appointment time for the Nineveh, God sent his people there. It's not the first time though, that God appointed it. Now we know that, it's, that God doesn't want Jonah to go there, not want a decree, but he go there, but it's a second time. And in between, there's a preparation of the prophet of Nineveh, of us, we hear the word of God also. There is lesson from us on this, because this is our life. Every one of us, we think we are wise. We think we know how to do stuff. And we follow that. We hear the word of God, but our flesh, the world around us, the lie of the enemy, deceitful, may lead us to the other way and we follow that but there's a time in our life god talked to us a long time by his mercy and he prepared us in the meantime so now let's turn our bible on philippians chapter 2 verse 13. philippians chapter 2 verse 13 and it says For it is God which works in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. The fact that Jonah rose, that's a gift from God. That's not by the strength of Jonah. It's not by his will. The will and the do, it's a gift from God. The fact that you arise, it's God giving you strength. Without Christ, we can't do anything. He will sleep in the, in the boat like he was before, and he will sleep again. He will, may say, wait a little bit, Lord, and, but here it's God who raised the man. And then he arose. So Jonah arose, verse 3, and went unto Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. It's really, um, you remember when uh, uh, Mary and Martha, the, they said to Jesus, Jesus, our brother is sick and he is almost, he will die. And then Jesus stay still three days, four days in the place. He didn't go there. After four days, he go there, but he, the, the man is already dead for four days. And they said, oh, if you are here, you won't be dead. But now he's already uh, four days, he's, he's think already. But this is God's appointment. God has his time at the ball of thinking. We may think when we preach to someone, we think like, hmm, there is nothing up here. Or, Lord, why we are still waiting for this? We pray for a long time for this. We trust in God. Right? We trust in God because God is wise. He knows everything. And he is the one who controls everything according to his good pleasure and for his glory. So we just rely on him. And here is God's appointment with the Nineveh. He prepared also the, uh, already the Nineveh that Jonah, there is an act of God with Jonah in his life. And Jonah's message like precedes him already to the Nineveh saying like, this man, God already worked in the life of this man. There is a mighty hand of God in the life of this man. When he is coming, we better listen to him because this is not like any other gods. 
This is the God of the universe, the one who created the earth and the heaven, the one who commanded the fish through and then through this man. We better listen to him. What is to say? So there is God's preparation in the heart of those people. And he's, uh, uh, as you said before, an Hebrew, when he uh, talked to the, the sheep, the people in the, the ship, which told them already that he is the one who feared the Lord. So he better fear the Lord. Not man, but the Lord. God's love. Very uh, humbling for us, but we praise him. If we look on First John, let, please let's turn our Bible on First John, chapter four, verse ten. If you want to see one of the definition of love, God's love, First John, chapter four, verse ten. It says, "Herein is love, not that we loved God." but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. It's not us who love God. We may think, oh, I come to Christ. I accept Christ. But the thing is, it's true that you come, but you can't come unless God draw you. That's for sure. Because you are dead. Dead doesn't move. Dead there is no life in the dead. And when you are dead in trespasses and sins, there is no hope unless God intervenes. God takes the dust and make us from the dust. He put life. And then that is the creation. To make a new creation, it has to come from above, from God himself, the creator of the universe. It's him who gives life. And that life, it's in Christ. It says here, send his son. That's the best gift. The best gift that can ever be. To be the propitiation for our sin. Propitiation means appease the wrath of God for the sinners. The sinners, we deserve, as the Ninevite here, what they deserve? Death, eternal punishment, judgment, damnation. Because they are, as we are, sinner, evil, violent, as it says here, working our own way, dwelling in darkness, far from God, enmity against God. But God, who is rich in mercy, by his love, sent his only begotten Son. The Lamb of God will take away our sin. He shed his blood, clean us from all unrighteousness. And his righteousness, robe of righteousness, he put on us. Cover us. Cover us in and the sacrifice shed his blood to uh, clean us and appease the wrath of God. If we look on verse 5 till 9, we will see the God's grace here. Verse 5 till 9. So the people of Nineveh believe God. Believe uh, it's a gift from God. Believe goes with repentance. There is no belief without repentance, and there is no repentance without belief. Those are the fruit of life that God gives to someone who is dead. God give them life. They see Christ. They, be, they repent from their sin. It's like someone who is in darkness, right? When you're in darkness, you can't see anything. Even if you are dirty as you are, there's no way that you know that you are dirty. But as there is a light, shine, the word of God, proclaim, convince us, the Holy Spirit convince us from sin, from the word of God. Lord, open our eyes. We see like, oh, I'm dirty. I'm like a sinner. We hear the word and we look and we see that we are dirty. If you look on Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 20, 
verse 12, it says, the ear in ear and the seeing eye, the Lord had made even both of them. So the one who can hear the word of God and the one who can see his state, our state, it can, it can be uh, written in the, in the creation. It's only through the word of God. The Holy Spirit works through the word of God that reveals us how is our state. And who is the Savior? Jesus Christ. So that's the power of God to send the sinners. And that's why we preach the word of God, because it's the only way that the sinner can come to Christ. The word of God. Not the, the creation tell us that God exists, for sure. That there is a creator, he is powerful, but it doesn't reveal to us our state. Otherwise, we go on the street. Go on the street, everyone thinks they are good. I go to jail, they said they are good. I pray to them, they think they are good. So everyone thinks that they are good in some way. The only thing, the only way that we can see our state, even someone who is in Christian family and the, they will see their state only through the word of God. The Holy Spirit opened their eyes, opened their ears to hear, and they see like, wow, I'm a sinner. I'm far from God. And that happened with the Nineveh. They believe God. Those are wicked people. It says evil, violent, but God's grace. God's grace means God's gift toward the undeserved. Why they are undeserved? Because when you become first, uh, let's read verse 5 to verse 9. So the people of Nineveh believed God and proclaimed a fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them, even to the least of them. For word came unto the king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne, and he laid his robe from him, and covered him with sackcloth and sat in ashes. And he caused it to be proclaimed and published through Nineveh by the decree of the king and his noble saying, Let neither man nor beast, herd or flock, taste anything, let them not feed nor drink water, but let a man and beast be covered with sackcloth and cry mightily unto God. Yea, let them turn everyone from his evil way and from the violence that is in their hands. Who can tell if God will turn and repent and turn away from his fierce anger so that we perish not? So we see here that they see their state, evil way. They talk about violence in our hand. And it's the king. The king, there's an act here that the king did. He lay aside his robe. The robe is, is like pride. He's thinking like he's, he, first, he come out from his throne. He stand from his throne. The one who's on the throne is Christ. And then he put aside his robe. He thinks that is pride. And then he put on sackcloth. It's like our life, uh, brother and sister. In our life, when we repent, we put away the malice, the selfishness, the things that we are uh, working on our own way and put on humble, humbleness, love, and we will read, let's say, on Ephesians. Let's turn Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 22 and 20, till 24. That he put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And that he put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. So there is in our life, even as a Christian, we come to the Lord, repent. When we read the Bible, 
you know, life every day. And then we see that the Lord talked to us. We see something that we didn't see before. And we see that there is something in our life that we need to get rid of. We, we put aside something and we put on or cover. Here on uh, Jonah, it says on verse 6, cover with sackcloth. Sackcloth is you know, like a symbol of uh, humility, humbleness. So he put aside his robe and his pride, everything, and then humility. So he was. So he was. Ready to listen to the Lord. Jonah himself, he put aside his own thinking, even if it's legitimate. He's thinking like those Ninevites, they are not good. But that is on thinking. I, I don't want to go to that. But God said, you have to go there. There is my people there. You have to go there. And then just, it's like uh, Peter. Peter is a professional fisherman. Maybe generation wise, they are fishermen. For the fishermen, I asked my grandpa on this one. He, he knows the fish of the fishing. He said, they don't send it to the depth because it's cold. And it's cold, the fish don't go there. That's why they do it like here, closer, not in death. So the fish go there at night. But Peter used his wisdom, his experience, his professionalism, saying, this is the way to do this. But he didn't get anything by the grace of God. God has a plan for Peter. And then Christ came, and then Christ said, put it in Peter. Peter said, oh Lord, all night we work hard, we didn't get anything. But by your word, I will let the net go back. Let's be that our I will say way of thinking, our mind submit to the will of God, even if it's opposite of what we think is right, even legitimate. Just follow the Lord because He's wise, He's good. And that happened here. Jonah over there, the Nineveh also. They turn away from their sin. They turn away, they put away, and then they put on. Belief, well, there is no belief, as I said, with well, repentance, but there is also no repentance without belief. And belief is a gift from God. So, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. It says, it's a classical verse. Classic, classic verse, classical verse. For by grace are you saved through faith. And that's not of yourselves. It's a gift of God. The belief, the faith, that is a gift from God. And um, Christ's righteousness, it's covered us with his robe of righteousness. So here, the king, he removed his robe, but Christ put also on us. When we remove our filthy rags, he put on us his robe of righteousness. We can see that in Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 61, Isaiah 61, verse 10. And it says, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decked himself with ornaments, 
and as a bride adorned herself with her jewels. So Christ is righteousness. He followed the law in perfection. And as his God, it's, it has internal, internal impact as, uh, as the person who do it. Christ who is God himself. So his act and part of it, the, the length of it is eternal and is perfect. And there is no blemish in it. That righteousness he put on his people. Cloth that, so God, when he look at his people, it's like we are clean. Not for one moment, he says eternal, eternal life. It's forever. And our sin, he clean us with his blood. He shed his blood. He took upon him on his on his body, when we take the Lord's Supper, we, we, we remember those, that it's not from our strength, it's from God's grace in Christ, so that we are clean, that we are right in front of God. He reconciled us, he make peace to God through what he is doing and what he was taking on his body shed his blood. He paid the price. He redeemed us from our sin and then he, he gave us like inheritance, eternal inheritance in Christ Jesus. Uh, we don't know the impact of that because we are like man. We are like time-wise. We, we go by time, right? Like we uh, Eternal is not 1,000 years. Eternal is no end, like, no, we still think of time, but gift of God is eternal. And there is no change. Um, Lordship of the Lord in our life is very important uh, for we can see that someone is really saved, but God changed the person by the fruit on his life that he followed the Lord. If there is someone who said, the Lord saved me, but there is no change in his life, there is no fruit of righteousness in his life. We Christians, we Christians because there is no work of God in their life than in this case. It's profession. It's not because we say that we are saved. That means we are saved. It's inside that God works in us. He changes us. He gives us a new heart. That's the act of God. It's not from us. Not from below. It's from above. Act of God. And uh, we can pray though. We can pray as Maria and Martha pray to Jesus that he may come to see their brother. We can pray for friends, family, people around us, those that we will preach, that God may have mercy on them. Yeah. Uh, the last uh, part is verse 10, God's mercy. It says, and God saw their works that they turned from their evil way, and God repented of the evil that he had said that he would do unto them, and he did it not. So uh, the sinner here, they deserve death, right? They deserve judgment, damnation, punishment, eternal punishment. But God spared them of what they deserve. The nature of God is it's a merciful God, gracious God. And God deal with the Nineveh differently. Not as the wicked nation, as they used to be. Like evil, violent, wicked, but as a believer and repented nation. The change of the Nineveh, though, is an act of God. So here, there's a decree of God revealed regarding the Nineveh. God, from eternity past, 
as plan for those people. But they put in Christ those people, and then at the time that God appointed, he sent a prophet to preach to them the gospel, and this God gave them ear and eyes, and they changed, and they changed. God is mercifully said, I won't cast out those who come to me. It's not everyone who come to God, but those who come to him, he will never cast out. And he's faithful on his word. When he said that, he will do it. Uh, let's read the John chapter 6, verse 44. John chapter 6, verse 44. No man can come to me except the Father which has sent me draw him. And I will rise him at the last day. It's, it's normal. It's normal, right? When you are dead, you can't. You can't move. But, so he said, no man can come to me except the Father draw him. And as the Father draws, so the person come. And when the person come, Christ will never cast out those who come to him. So is the meaning, right? As wicked as that they are, if they stay in their state, as wicked for sure, they will be overflowing. That God said. But God is merciful. He changed their heart. He sent a prophet to them. And then that changed the nation. And God deal with them. Differently. This is the work of God who changed, not God. God is immutable. Immutable, he never changed. And we go, our thing is we go by time. Oh, in the beginning, God is, and then after this. But God, if we look, for example, let's turn our Bible on Isaiah chapter 46, verse 10. Isaiah 46, verse 10. Explain a little bit about the decree of God. Or first, and we start verse 9. It says, Remember the former things of old, for I am God and there is none else. I am God and there is none like me, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times the things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. My counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. This is from eternity past. Before the foundation of the world, God already has a plan, which is not revealed to us. But at this point of time, we know that, oh, there are also children of Abraham, then, because they come to Christ which is not before their case. We are thinking, oh, they are wicked. And that's why we don't select people to whom we share the word of God. Because the arm of God is long, can reach anyone, even in the belly of the fish, he can hear them. Even they are in the depth of the sea, he can reach them with their everlasting arm. Is merciful God, gracious God, long suffering, slow to anger. If he is like quick to anger, then we are not here. None of us here. No, not the anybody. Not Jonah. So, uh, praise be to God. Uh, he is the source, the mean. And the end of everything. The glory will be in the Apostle Paul talked about it in you know, Roman chapter 11, verse 36. Roman chapter 11, verse 36. He said, or let's start on verse 33, verse 36. All the death of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God, 
how unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. For who has known the mind of the Lord? Or who has been his counselor? For who was first given to him, and it shall be recompensed unto him again. For of him, and for him, and to him are all things. To whom be glory forever and ever. And it doesn't say something. It's all things. Nobody gives to him, and then, because of that, God gives them something. It says, it's him. We love him because he first loved us. It's not because we first love him, then he loved us. We loved him because he first loved us. And draw us to him. The dead people, he draw the dead people to him. And the dead rise and come, like Lazarus. It's not Lazarus who said to Christ, rise me up. It's Christ who said, dead, rise up. And the dead rise. Lazarus, rise up. And when I read Spurgeon about this, Spurgeon said, fortunately, Jesus said, Lazarus, because if he said, the dead rise up, all the dead rise. But he said, Lazarus, it's specific. Such as each one of us in our life, God called us, maybe it's not like audible like that, but through his word, through the preaching of the word of God, through the reading of his word, through the tract that someone may share to us, through different stuff, like conversation between friends at school, like beside the table or anything. God use those, bring his word, the Holy Spirit convince the heart of the sinner, look to Christ for salvation and repent from their sin and God save them. They hear the word and then they see and then they repent, turn away, look to Christ. And they, he healed them. He healed them. And this is a gift from God. This is a gift from God. That's why it's grace. Nothing from us because we are dead. The, the Holy Spirit used the word dead in trespasses and sin. Not another word, but very really specific. That means no life. Dead doesn't move, doesn't hear, doesn't see. Unless there is a life that God brings, there is nothing happen. Even if as good as a preacher be as whatever the, the, the word you bring to them, there is nothing unless God operates in the heart of sinners. And that's happening here with the Nineveh. God operates in them. There is, it's not God who change. It's the Nineveh to change. The Nineveh, they, they change. And God deals with them accordingly. And it's a gift from God from eternity past. He has already a plan for them that they will turn away from their sin. That's why he sent his prophet God, that they may heal the word of God even through different situations. But God, you ready, you go there. You go there. Praise God. Father, thank you, Lord, for our word. Thank you for uh, your people here tonight that. Uh, you give us ear and eyes so we may hear and see the holiness, the majesty, and the power of God operate to the sinners. And you change us, O oh God, bring us to the marvelous light from darkness. It's a beautiful story. It's old, old story, but it doesn't change this time. You are the same, and you are still in the business of changing people. We pray, O oh God, that you may send your people to share your word. Send us, O oh God, uh, mold us according to your way, and uh, may we have humble heart, submission, share your word, and may your name be glorified. Because you are the one who is gracious. You are the one who is loving God and merciful slot winger. In Christ we pray. Amen.